Greetings. This is Arvette McLean with Speak, the Universe Listens. New ways to view age-old challenges. Change your thoughts. Change your life. Step into the bigness of you. someone's spirit is when you connect that way you can't help but love them and you you can't help but love them with no conditions and you you love them beyond their physical being mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the, the biggest benefit that I have even felt through uh, connecting with somebody spiritually is uh, the power of intentions grows with the amount of people focusing on it so like if you're connecting spiritually and you guys are both putting your intentions on something or a group like we do every Tuesday is putting your intentions on something it it makes it happen exponentially so I think you definitely want to create those um spiritual connections because if you could do something faster why not (laughs) (laughs) I guess that's that's the best way I can say like why everything is better when you collaborate so why not <laughs> so yeah, so um, one thing that I had learned several years ago was the benefit of connecting to people that you have a difficult relationship with. And so instead of collect connecting with them on a physical level where you might, you know, be at odds and you might actually make the situation worse <laughs> um, to start connecting with them on spiritual level so that was where I first learned that but then I think this summer I came to the realization like um, you can even connect with people who are they may be going through a hard time like you may not be at odds with them they just going through a hard time and so if you're able to make a, a spiritual connection with them you can actually help elevate them in the sense of almost as like tapping on them to remind them that they're more than just their body by you connecting at a spiritual level. Yeah, I think I had uh, um, like family members so that what you were just saying we may clash on the physical It took me a while. It took me a while to learn how to do it because I was stuck in 3D. And the 3D was sort of blinding me. And after um, I learned that you know, I can love them beyond the physical, and I can reach them like that, it was like, okay, this, this is cool. I like this. <laughs> I like this. You know, uh, one example that I uh, constantly think about of a uh, that I guess now, I, I don't know, it might have been like a spiritual connection with um, man, going to be mad at me for telling the story, but I remember uh, when I had my knee surgery, uh, they told me, they was like, yeah, you know, yeah, the 
playing football probably gonna ain't gonna never happen again. You know, you gonna be in a wheelchair for a couple of years. And I remember, uh, of course, Rodney, my best friend, so I called him on the phone crying. I'm like, man, this is gonna be in a wheelchair. <laughs> and it got quiet for like maybe a minute or two. And then we both just busted out laughing. Same time. Like at the same time, like that. I don't know, like, I guess looking back, I don't know, I felt like my brother just reached me spiritually at the time, like like you said, we won at odds, but, you know, I was going through something, hey, I don't know, so thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't tell you that later. And I actually, this is just coming to my conscious awareness, but in hindsight, I know this is something that I've done a million times, and I'm sure everybody has. But like sometimes um, you could be with someone who's in pain or hurting, mm -hmm. um, and you don't know what to say. Like mm -hmm. you feel like there's no words that you could say that's gonna make the situation better. But just by you being there, and it's like in your head you're loving them, and that that is what makes them better. You know. Um, so I had an aunt pass away and I, I was at a funeral uh, lately and a prime example of that spiritual connection I, that I realized was um, the preacher was up there giving like a eulogy and I never realized well, like what a eulogy really was like until like just now honestly I feel like it's like a and they're just up there connecting with the whole room spiritually like they come in they read the room they're like alright well let's get everything right here and he just moved the crowd here, or moved the crowd there. And you might not, you might have never seen this person before. You ain't never met this preacher before in your life, but they even found some way to just, when you going through a hard time, they found a way to just connect with you on some random, on like what you think might be a dark, one of your darkest days. They just found the lightest connection and just moved the whole room. And now everybody's just smiling. And yeah, so the preachers are, uh, they, you're pretty good at all those spiritual connections. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so there's definitely being able to connect with somebody on a spiritual level definitely can just flip situations around. And we already say it can help people feel better when they at their worst. It can help change personal conflicts with other people around. And this is just the aspect of somebody leaving a space feeling loved. And so I think you might have mentioned that you've done it a lot in your life. So what techniques do you use to make that spiritual connection? Um, one is listening. You know, I think uh, I, so like some, sometimes people are going through a lot of things. And when they're going through certain things, for me, I notice that when I sit back, I don't respond. I'm just there. I'm present with you in your moment, you know, but I'm listening. That's all that you need. But you feel, you feel my love and you feel my support without me saying anything to you. Um, that's one big uh, aspect that I learned for myself. Um, and then I think something else is uh, just uh, sort of like being aware. You know, when I say be aware, it's like. When it comes to the 3D and you having sort of like a little turmoil with somebody and uh, you can't really uh, get along physically, but when you're away from them, you, it's, I don't know how you describe that feeling, no, because I've had this feeling before, you know, with one of my family members, and I'm like, the times that I want to get away, I get away because I know we can't mush together very well, but even so, I still love you. My love ain't going nowhere. And even even though I know you are, you may be going through something, but you may not be going through something. I always come back, you know, or if not come back, you at least know I'm here if you do. Yeah, I think for me to, uh, like with a situation like that, if it's someone that I'm having issues with in the physical and, and you know, they're close to me or whatever the case may be, or a family member, I try to try to visualize us laughing together. Mm -hmm. I know at some point, if I know you, we didn't laugh together. 
So I try to visualize that, and then that brings me to the space where we really more than this issue that we having mm -hmm. right now. Like we way beyond this. Like, right. and it brings to a space where I'm like, how can I be mad at you when I'm seeing us laughing together, you know, and, and loving each other? And I think that makes the uh, situation way better. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Oh, I found myself like oddly like connecting like with people seriously like unintentionally though like you walk into a situation you're just listening like steven said you know they might say something and then all of a sudden words just come out of my mouth it might not even be me saying it. it's just they just flowing <laughs> suddenly i got a message and it's like all right i don't know where that came from but here we are and it's then we just connected and it's like yeah like everything was just flowing everything just flows that um Yeah, that, I had those moments where it's like, uh, you don't know this person, you don't know nothing about them, but you just felt you you had, it was something, you had some words for them, like, it was something that you had to tell them that really may have helped them, it's like, well, how did I even know to tell them that, you know, like, one of those things where you just feel like you were supposed to, you were supposed to tell them this at this moment or something. So, so I've never had an experiment, an experience like that. Have y'all had an experience? Yeah. I think, uh, I don't know. I think I've been in uh, situations where it's like, I'll run into somebody and we can just be talking about something and then they will talk about something that I can literally relate to and I may be going through it at that time. Mm -hmm. And then I can just, and then we just start talking about it and I'm like, you know, giving them advice or either they can so I, I think I had that happen a few, a few times, and it's crazy because I'm thinking, wow. <laughs> like it, it must be enough for me to sit back and, and talk to you, but it, it was pretty uh, cool. The mind typically comes through writing, right. so sometimes I'll just be moved to write someone a letter, mm -hmm. and then I don't even never know what I wrote. Like I give them a letter, and then the person will be like, "Oh my God, that was just the best letter ever." And um, I actually had a person who would always be like, "My friend going through something. Can you write them a letter? <laughs> I need one of those letters like you wrote me because you made. I, I got out of the bed when I read your letter, you know, or whatever." And I just be like, "What? The, what? What did the letter say?" <laughs> something on my mind and it comes from experience you know and I just gotta get it out <laughs> I had a crazy thing happen one time and I hope I can explain it right but and it might sound terrible but one of my friends had contacted me but this is when I used to work around the clock like all of the time and they contacted me and they were just like I'm not okay and I was like okay well look I'm gonna call you back <laughs> 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 or whatever and um so but of course I never got a chance to call because like I said so um that night I wrote a letter and I, I actually I emailed them a letter and so that was that and I never you know I didn't hear back from them or anything like that so then I was in the situation where I was just like I, I feel like I can't work another second like I can't do this anymore and I'm just like I need I can't and so I called that exact same person yeah. and I was just like I'm not okay you know and they were like hold on a second and then they came back and they were reading me something and the words that they read me oh my gosh they were just the perfect perfect words and I was just like <laughs> and I'm like, wow, like, it's just amazing how, because of all the people I called, right. I called that person who had the words, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that I needed to hear. <laughs> you know, um, not even sure if it's all the way on topic, but I was thinking about, like, the word coincidence, and it, it, it just can't be any, because, like, that moment right there, that's not a coincidence to me. Like, that was, like, to me, like, your spirit, that was like that spiritual connection. It was like, all right, 
I know exactly where I need to go to get like what I need because we've made that connection already. So it's like it was just coming back full circle. Like a common thing would be like, oh, what a coincidence. It's like, no, like you created that moment. That's powerful. And the thing, the example that I learned consciously this summer, but like I said, we had probably been knowing it forever, but consciously became aware. Like if somebody else is hurting, because I typically, when somebody says I'm not okay, I typically will say, well, I'm sending you loving energy, mm -hmm. right? And so I will literally be thinking, you know, sending them loving energy, but not really aware if it makes a difference or not. Like I'm not mm -hmm. consciously aware of it. And so I became consciously aware because um, the person was just in a bad space and <laughs> They kind of caused me to go into a bad space to cause me to go out of alignment, out of whack. And so I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm not okay. This person is just, whoo, got me. <laughs> and um, so, but then when I pulled myself back into alignment, wow. and then I consciously was sending them loving energy, and just, it was kind of like a spiritual tap on their shoulder. It was like once I started sending them that energy, then it was like things just flipped around for them or whatever. And I was like, oh, I can intentionally send my energy to someone in the same way, like when I have, when it's a conflict, mm -hmm. I can send my energy to that person and it's like that person will remember, um, oh, I'm more than this physical. It just helps awake, awaken them. And so I've been now consciously helping people to remember <laughs> like mm -hmm. I'm I just call them like little spiritual taps yeah. like woohoo you more than this physical body and it's, it's almost like in my brain I'm seeing their spirit getting back into their body mm -hmm. saying woohoo you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. hello <laughs> mm -hmm. and so um, the technique that I use to do exactly what Stephen was saying is and kind of what everybody has said, but I literally, when I'm having conflict with a person, or oh, I know it's gonna, it's a possibility of a bad situation, I would just see that person, and I would send my higher self to their higher self, and I just dance. I just, I love on them, I dance with them, I um, laugh with them, right. just have a great time. I'm not trying to say, okay, well this is the situation, and this is how I want you to act <laughs> when, <laughs> when I see you tomorrow. So it's none of that. I'm not trying to work the situation out, saying how I want it to go. I'm just loving them, and that's it. And then that just magically transforms the situation when I actually do see them. All right. mm -hmm. I would uh, go into a difficult situation, and I would literally play it out in my head. <laughs> like the whole word for word. And it's like, it was never positive <laughs> until um, I started like, like I said, visualizing us laughing and things like that. And it's like, well, dang, that was easy after that, <laughs> you know? So I think going into that space of connecting that way and sending that love is very impactful. And a lot of times people are like, well, I don't like that person or I don't even know that person or, that person get on my nerves. It ain't nothing about them that I love, <laughs> you know. But you still like with anybody, you can find something that you love. Whether it's maybe they got a great laugh, maybe you like the sound of their voice, maybe you like the shoes that they pick out. Like you can choose anything, something, something. And, yeah, <laughs> and love on that thing, um, and not be concerned about their physical attitude, disposition. None of that. It's a beautiful feeling when you can um, connect to somebody just on the on the mental, mm -hmm. on the mental level, mm -hmm. and you just you forget about the physical, and you're like, dang, all right, you you might have to take another day. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I would say, um, I I smile, I smile a lot, and I like laugh at people that you know it might be um, might have a little turmoil. Situation may be, but for me, that's like my therapy. 
Because <laughs> then I'm like, oh, you not. You know, why am I even mad at you? Yeah, yeah and I kind of do both of what everybody kind of just said. Hey, I just try and find like any bit of joy. Like, if we've ever had like any moment, like Rod said, uh, we've ever shared any moment that was genuine and like just pure. I try and focus on that. Or um, when I was first starting and first learning to change my second, I stole your idea. I was just dancing with everybody. Um, but lately, it's kind of just been like a. I try and speak to everybody actually, and, like. But I try and like go out of my way to like make sure I like verbally like speak to everybody. Like, I want you to hear my voice because you know sometimes you know we might our issue might just be somebody just doesn't feel heard or seen. So just a simple acknowledgement, and you know I'm coming to you pure with this. Like, you could disagree with everything I say. You can't disagree with hey. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why that's how I kind of try and approach it. Like whenever I'm in a situation where it's like ah, you know, we might be a little turmoil. Just hey, you know, coming in with that hey like that, and it's always like an upbeat hey. They instantly like just jump into like a hey, <laughs> and then we go from there. I really like what you were saying earlier. It's something that I want to give a lot more thought to when you were talking about how a pastor can move a crowd and that basically he's connecting spirit to spirit with the people. And it's like you connecting with the whole audience at the same time on a level that's beyond what may be personally, physically going on, but on some level that's causing this. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you guys for joining us on this topic of how to connect with someone on a spiritual level. And it's so beneficial to you as well as to all the people around you. Um, just keeping your um, vibration as high as possible. Coming from your higher self when you think about people, when you're loving on people, when you're interacting, if, if it's conflicts, whatever it is, take it to the next level and deal with it on that level. You'd be amazed at how things work out. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is our dad. And this is Steven. Right. And Teron.